I'm Marty Stauffer. Antlers are the peculiar property of the deer family. No other creature in the world has this special kind of structure on its head. Worn by the males and females of some species, the most amazing thing about antlers is they fall off. They shed them in winter every year and grow new ones in time for the next autumn mating season. That's an amazing amount of growth. Mother Nature has graced few of her children with the stately symbol of beauty and strength as this antlered crown. It's only one of their adaptations. Since they first crossed the Bering Sea land bridge to arrive in America from Asia three million years ago, the deer family has been adapting to a wide variety of habitats from Alaska all the way down to Florida. That's why there's so many different kinds of them. The family of deer, elk, moose, and caribou have only a few members which are endangered. Instead, we find our most commonly sighted and some of our most popular large animals within this antlered kingdom. Commonly sighted, but uncommonly elegant, the deer are truly a royal family. The caribou, antlers fit for a king. The elk, proud monarch. The whitetail, solid citizen. The moose, Definitely no Prince Charming. But what is this fawn? Bambi, garden pest, or venison? Deer have captured our imaginations and have found their way into our literature and legends. The tiny key deer qualifies as a living legend. They were nearly extinct several decades ago, their numbers down to an all-time low of 30. A sanctuary was established, and today, 300, maybe even more, roam the Florida Keys. Why are the deer so small? That question has been asked since they were first discovered by explorers in the 15th century. Nature's had the answer all along. Instead of having the species disappear forever, she made them smaller so they would not overburden their fragile environment. Yet man continues to overburden their island habitat with his own demands. The key deer is the smallest subspecies of this, the white-tailed deer. It lives in every state. One of the most successful survivors of all times the whitetail is America's official antlered animal.
This species is the most adaptable, most numerous, most widely distributed, and most important large mammal on the continent. I'm always inspired by the sight of a tender newborn fawn or a graceful bounding doe. Her white tail, at once a namesake, warning signal, and wild flag of freedom. The black-tailed deer inhabits coastal areas from California to Alaska. It's related to the mule deer. A larger animal than the white tail, the mule deer's racks are also larger, and they have a different shape. Instead of having one main beam with tines, each antler splits into two main beams, and each beam then forks into tines. The number of points do not indicate the animal's age. Obviously, oversized ears gave the deer its name, but there's no evidence that they help it to hear any better than its smaller-eared cousins. Still, the mule deer's hearing is keen and is second only to its sense of smell. For one of the most preyed upon animals, sharp senses are vital. The deer prefer open areas with some cover nearby. Far from the fringes of civilization, these Rocky Mountain foothills are also home for one of North America's largest predators, the mountain lion, or cougar. These cats regularly hunt mule deer, stalking, then ambushing their prey. Perhaps his companion was young and inexperienced. Her individual death contributes to the health of her species. The unsound and unwary animals are taken, leaving the fit and alert to carry on. Both cougar and man help the deer population. The cougar weeds out the weak. Man protects their habitat.
The mule deer is important prey for the wild and the civilized predator alike. Dance now. Be glad for this place. Your ancestors once reigned over all of our great land, from sea level to timberline. These mountains are your retreat. This glorious refuge, Yellowstone National Park, where you can live free forever. Spring brings new life to Canada geese and to Rocky Mountain elk. Food is plentiful in the summer highlands, and for several hours each day, the bull grazes, his growing antlers now covered in velvet. antlers develop faster and earlier than any other in the deer family. By autumn, the velvet has peeled away from the hardened bone. Now that the grasses have dried, the bulls put on fat for the approaching rutting season. Then they will spend all their time fighting and mating, and have little time left over for the business of eating. The largest racks crown the best food gatherers. These are bulls that have eaten what is required for survival, and then some. Energy spared from their pure body needs goes into luxury items, like enormous headgear. Antlers are a status symbol, and the cost of a huge rack is a shortened lifespan because a big bull seldom rests. He is constantly fighting and breeding, maintaining his superior position within the female harem and the male hierarchy. Although he may die at a younger age than the smaller, less active bulls, by doing the most breeding, he leaves behind a long-lasting and powerful legacy. In February or March, the battle-weary bulls will drop the antlers they have spent so much time and energy growing. In the natural world, the shedding of their antlers would seem like an incredible waste. But some biologists theorize that it has a purpose. The bulls, weakened by weeks of fighting, cannot be easily spotted by predators. Without antlers, they blend into the crowd, looking just like females. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen, all for free. No subscription required. The smaller, paler Thule elk exist entirely within several refuge areas in central California.
Like their larger, more numerous relatives, the Thule also graze and move as a herd for protection from predators. As the largest antlered animal in the world and the tallest mammal in the Americas, the moose deserves a prize. His looks, however, are enough to disqualify him from any animal beauty contest. Is there a reason for his homely face? His overhanging upper lip does help him to grasp food, but no one can figure out the reason for his beard. At five years, a bull's massive, palmated antlers are fully grown. The winner does not collect a harem. Instead, he mates with one female at a time. Then he leaves her and goes on to find another and another. The secret to success lies in sniffing out which female is ready to breed and when. Twins are the rule for older cows. Like father, like son and daughter. The bull's offspring are large and healthy. This is the most endangered large mammal now living in the United States, the woodland caribou. Although I filmed these in Canada, where their numbers are stronger. The same species now battles to survive within our own borders. Only about a dozen remain in Idaho. That number is inexcusable and sad, especially since they once inhabited all the northern states. Washington, Idaho, Montana, Minnesota, Michigan, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. The most nomadic of the antlered kingdom the barren ground caribou, roams the tundra of Alaska and western Canada. Every spring, the herds travel north to their traditional calving grounds. Hardship is as old as this ancient tundra and as young as this newborn calf.
only minutes old, already discovering the secret of Arctic survival. Fight to live. But living is more than fighting. It's also loving. A strong bond links mother and young. Wolves continually follow the caribou herds. For a flock of ptarmigan, escape is only a wing beat away. A careless mother strays too far. A wolf finds her unprotected calf. She has only seconds to save its life. Born within days of each other, caribou calves greatly outnumber their predators. Even so, there are always unlucky ones. And a mother's dance to lure enemies away becomes a dance of death. A female grizzly and her cub in caribou country. Omnivorous and opportunistic, grizzlies would not hesitate to attack and kill a weak or wounded caribou. A herd of healthy ones, however, is no match for the bears. The caribou move on, as they always have and always will, forever searching for food in this land of long winters. They stop for nothing, neither great distance nor great danger. The journey of 600 miles ends for a while, but the caribou continue their enduring tradition. Antlers gleaming, 
the great bulls lower their magnificent crowns and began their spectacular battles once more. A set of antlers can be a deadly weapon in a sparring match between males. But it's this kind of natural selection which allows these antlered populations to survive and even prosper in the face of human expansion. The antlers which crown the caribou, moose, elk, and deer are beautiful. Unfortunately, beauty alone cannot guarantee their survival. Some animal families are fortunate to have adaptations which both decorate and defend, which are both elegant and efficient. Few creatures have a more close association of lovely form and basic function as have those in the antlered kingdom. I'm Marty Stouffer. Until next time, Enjoy our wild America.